Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time of the year again. What was it? <laughs> this is exactly how many of us are feeling this time because uh, I see Indrikpanchang.com. This is Munich, Germany time. Mercury, the planet of... What was Mercury? <laughs> Whatever Mercury was, he... Today, 31st March, uh, 9.22 p.m. Munich time, he's going to enter Mean Rashi, the sign of Pisces. And he will stay there till 16th of April. And 5.35 p.m. in the evening, Munich German time, he will enter Mesh Rashi, which is Aries. And he'll be conjunct uh, Venus and Uranus there. Interesting. This is going to be very interesting. So, this mean Rashi, which is Pisces, is known as the debilitation sign of Mercury, okay? So, we know what is debilitation. Debilitation is bad, right? It's terrible. It's very bad. Uh, it's the worst thing to happen. Well, not exactly. Debilitation means the awareness of the planet is low. So, therefore, uh, you could uh, feel regarding those houses which Mercury rules in your chart that you are feeling uh, that you want to do something, but you are feeling that you have to pay a heavy price to do it. So it's not an external price, not that you have to compromise things externally, but internally you might feel that uh, one of the two things could happen. Either uh, you may feel that uh, what you are getting is not uh, what you want to, or what you wanted, or what you want now or in the future doesn't seem likely to happen. And then you have to take a detour, uh, go to some other place and come back, or you have to give it up. So because of this, what, hap what might happen is you might feel that, uh, you might question it, uh, yourself that, is it worth taking this risk? Which means, is it uh, worth uh, paying the price? Okay. So therefore, now what, what is Mercury representing, uh, if I remember? <laughs> Mercury is uh, representing our thought process, our uh, ability to connect things, basically. That's what Mercury is. Mercury um, is very important because he tells us how are things related to each other. Yes, that's what Mercury does. He tells us how are you and me, we are related, you, me, everybody else. That is why we are now related to each other. I am seeing uh, this camera, you are seeing this video hopefully. <laughs> and uh, that's how we, two people, are getting connected by Mercury. So Mercury's job is to come and bring two people together. And that could be anybody, friend, relative, spouse, or anybody. Everybody has a Mercury in the chart, and everybody needs a Mercury. That is why you know, whenever communication sector collapses, you feel as if, huh? Things are getting difficult. What happens when the communication sector is dismantled? You feel that there is something within you which you would like to share with others, uh, which you are not able to do. Okay, Either you are doing it online or especially in the current day situation, you're doing it online or you're having this whatever Zoom sessions or <laughs> uh, you're talking in phone. So what happens? What do you feel? You feel that the level of connection uh, is much easier when somebody is there in person. Okay. Of course, uh, this doesn't mean that just being uh, in person with somebody will give you all the connection. It's not necessary, but having physical proximity and a direct experience of Mercury is very uh, crucial and it's very vital for any really any human relationship. Not only humans, for humans and animals and within animals also. Okay. So basically, Mercury is anything that brings people together. Why do you feel that I need to talk, I need to share? It's because of Mercury. Because it is a natural benefit and he has that element within you which tells you that why are you sitting alone? Why not you go and experience some joy with somebody else? Okay. So that is what is actually Mercury. So therefore, now what happens is, Mercury, um, today night, he will be entering the sign of Pisces. Now, what is the sign of Pisces? See, Pisces is the sign of another natural benefit, uh, which is Jupiter. 
which is a great benefit uh, and supposedly this should be good <laughs> but uh, why uh, why why is this considered to be a debilitation sign for mercury because the traits of pisces if not used properly then it can uh, then it can really hamper our communication which means pisces has to do with the philosophical side pisces has to do with something which you don't see okay so for example uh, cancer see there are three water signs if you have to understand pisces you have to understand what's cancer what's scorpio then pisces what is cancer cancer represents a flowing river you know it's like um, exchanging love when you are talking to somebody mother and child or even with your spouse or parents anybody friends any kind of love and affection that you have that's cancer that is something which is like a flowing river it's flowing continuously non stop and then what does scorpio represent scorpio represents all the grudge of this world all the grudges all the animosity all the hatred all the destruction <laughs> right so that's what scorpio represents but uh, the thing is you can see um uh, cancer live which means you can see okay a mother is being affectionate to uh, her child you can see that literally you can also see scorpio when you see somebody pulling out all the hatred onto somebody that's nothing but scorpio it's just scorpio energy very simple stagnant water okay stagnant water means that which is not flowing which means there is no reciprocation which means what happens when you are hating somebody you uh, when two people are fighting what happens have you seen <laughs> imagine two people are, are talking in a loving way then one person is speaking the other is listening and the the other person speaks and this person listens so there is exchange there is flow energy is flowing from here one person to the other but in scorpio what is happening when two people are fighting one is going on dumping all the energy into the other oh you shut up i'll tell you i'll tell you how you should behave <laughs> who the hell are you you must listen to me i'll tell you now according to me it's like this according to you what whatever it is it doesn't matter it's just me so you can actually see scorpio you can also see uh, the energy of cancer in action very much but now you have this sign of pisces which is a very philosophical sign the sign of pisces has an energy which uh, you cannot see in the physical realm manifests it, it cannot it, uh, it it manifests but not in the way that we think it does or not the way we think it should okay the pisces is that part of you which tells you Uh, why at all should i communicate why at all should i uh, relate to you not not in a negative sense but you try to you try to see the philosophical aspect of everything and you try to wonder what is actually going on uh, why why am i at all doing this in the, doing this in the first place why at all is this happening to me so now uh, this might uh, be negative for somebody where people think that Well, anyways, this is of not much use, so I shouldn't. Uh, I should stay away from it. So that is why people who are prominent Pisces they can have this tendency to be away from something which they don't like. Um, but it can also be good sometimes. Okay, uh, where uh, in the where you you try to not just stay away from it, you try to see the higher perspective. That why is this happening? Why is this negative event happening? Why is this person being so much? negative towards me me is there something which i have done because of which this person has started developing this hatred towards me or how can i enhance the existing love which is there between both of us so therefore the sign of pisces is uh, the place where you uh, you try to understand what is the deeper lesson behind everything okay now this mercury he enters uh, this sign of pisces so then what happens is we get lost in our thoughts and we we start thinking what's going on why at all are we doing this so mercury is the planet of details and communication so what's mercury mercury see when you are talking to somebody you have to speak something right you have to articulate your points and then you have to uh, listen to the other person but 
sometimes if mercury is in pisces and this only happens if the overall chart is not very good then what happens is the person cannot communicate what he wants actually because he is so much lost in the thoughts of why at all is he having that conversation he or she might think that what am i going to get out of this not in a financial or materialistic sense but they may feel that oh yeah you know uh, or they may try to escape sometimes escapism is also a very important uh, prominent trait of pisces which means they can uh, because they are not able to communicate something to somebody in a proper way then they may hyper communicate something with somebody else okay so this is this is like saying they are running away from facing the reality okay so therefore mercury in pisces can be very good if you are using uh, and viewing it in a spiritual perspective uh, but otherwise it can be very uh, challenging sometimes okay no um, because you might develop a tendency to run away from that which is reality but now this is a very unique thing which is happening now mercury is not alone he is conjunct the planet of love romance creativity sexuality uh, beauty and intimacy which is venus okay so venus gets exalted in pisces and he is exalted now because he is also in pisces till uh, 15th of april so therefore now what is happening he is getting a uh, niche bhanga from venus okay niche bhanga means a planet's debility gets cancelled you know because the lord of the sign is sitting with the planet there or the lord of the sign is aspecting that planet in that sign or a planet which gets exalted in that sign is sitting there with that planet or is aspecting that planet okay in that sign so now venus gets exalted in pisces and mercury gets debilitated so mercury is getting nicha bhanga nicha bhanga means imagine somebody is blind okay the person is unable to cross the street so many times people think nicha bhanga means okay everything becomes normal no it doesn't become normal what happens is imagine a blind man is uh, trying to cross the street so you see the oh this person is trying to cross the street and it's very difficult because there are too many cars coming and there could be an accident now of course uh, they may be blessed by god to be more intuitive but you realize it is good if you go and help that person personally so then you go and get that person's hand and you take uh, him to the other side of the street so this is exactly like nicha bhanga nicha bhanga does not mean that the debility uh, gets nullified okay literally don't take things literally bhanga means destruction it, it doesn't mean that the debility gets nullified but that feeling so what happens if a person is suppose uh, suppose he or she is blind and uh, imagine they are uh, standing and busy street is going on okay there are thousands of cars coming and then this person feel, might feel sometimes overwhelmed the person may have this doubt within uh, himself or herself that will i be able to cross this street or not or it could be with you in any area of life okay you might have this uh, lack of confidence within you am i good for engineering am i good for medical science am i good for you know astrology am i good for this am i good for marriage or should i be a celibate or am i good for being a celibate should i have children should i not have children what it's the same predicament that you could be having okay now uh, therefore now when this person comes when you go and help that person cross that street so then what happens you you get this feeling as if uh, yes although i may not have my eyes but there is somebody to help me to get through this okay so therefore if a planet is getting niche bhanga in a dusthana especially it doesn't mean that the problem doesn't come it means that the challenge is there but somebody is helping you to come out of it okay so therefore now in the chart how this will manifest is <coughs> the houses that mercury rules as per your ascendant they may undergo this sense of blindness or oh, what am i going to do what am i uh, will i be will i be successful in this okay or you may feel i'll be successful but i will need you know two three attempts to get this done uh, but uh, now imagine uh, there is venus okay venus the houses that venus rules in your chart they are the ones who will take uh, mercury out of this okay so for example if venus is your 10th lord okay 
so then um, your boss can suggest you something okay if if mercury is uh, ruling a particular house which is obviously uh, for everybody so whichever house mercury rules in your chart depending on your ascendant and if venus is the 10th lord then your boss your career somebody from your profession can you know help you out or the profession could lend you some money by which you can you know come out of it if uh, venus is your ninth lord then uh, your uh, guru can uh, pull you out of it okay if venus is your seventh lord your spouse will uh, pull you out of it pull you out of it doesn't mean that you will not suffer but you will be able to navigate through it okay so when mercury venus conjoins in spices what happens is Mercury has this idea that, you know, I, I must think, I must think, but then I get lost in my thoughts. What should I do? Where should I go? And then Venus comes in and Venus tells him that, hold on. <laughs> Which means he tells Mercury that, do not be so obsessed with the result that you forget to enjoy the process. Okay? Pisces is like a process. It's like a seamless process which keeps happening inside of us every day that you can't see but you need some awareness to see that within yourself okay so therefore venus comes and tells mercury tells him that yes i know you are concerned about the results but what about the process if you are not happy now then you won't be happy after one year once you get this because that point which you think will make you happy is nothing but just another point in this same journey. So if you do not like the journey, the milestones will never make you happy. So therefore, milestones give us a boost in life. Okay, But it doesn't make us happy. Even if it does, it makes us happy temporarily. That is why uh, in this material world, you will always see when you were a child, especially I am from India. <clears throat> So when I was doing my 7th standard, 8th standard, 9th standard, 10th, uh, when I reached 10th standard, and from 5th standard, I used to hear, oh, my dear son, all the aunties and all the big, big uncles, I stayed in the company of the IS officers in India. They used to tell me, my dear son, my dear beta, <laughs> there's only one thing that you need to do in life. What is that? And once you do this thing alone, you are all successful. You will reach the summit once you do this. What is that? Ah, uh, yeah, you have to pass your 10th with flying colors. Okay. And then, uh, luckily, I passed my 10th with flying colors. It was exceptionally good. Uh, not that great, but quite good compared to how my grades were previously. Everybody was like, wow, you made it. You are like the star. Okay. And then um, after that result, everybody said, now if only you pass 12th, you will be at the top of the sky. You will get a good college for engineering and you, know, you will be able to earn in billions. Okay. I mean, <laughs> the way they would project it like this, you know, just become an engineer and that's the end of your life. Okay. Nothing else is required. Okay. But there was this engineering also, there were entrance exams. So then I gave my 12th and uh, the result was a disaster. It was like a catastrophe. <laughs> and then people are like, okay, no problem. You have to now get into engineering somehow. And then, then you have to get a job, then masters, then, you know, now promotion, all this. So the thing is, you have to understand that everything in life has a purpose. And so does milestones. Okay. But milestones can give you some happiness, which is that Mercury and happiness. But if you are not enjoying the process, which is Venus, then milestones will only give you temporary happiness. Okay, Just for a day or two, or maybe for one or two weeks, maximum 30 days, one cycle of the sun. After that, it all vanishes. So therefore, we should not be so much obsessed with the results and we should not be obsessed with the milestones that is what lord krishna tells to arjuna arjuna don't think of the results go and fight why because this is your dharma you should fight this is your duty you should do your karma don't think of karma fall which means the fruits of your actions do not think of the results okay and krishna also says to arjuna ma manusmara yudhyacha which means think of me when you are fighting do this 
एज अ सर्विस टू मी मन मनाभव मत भक्तो मध्या जी माम न मस गुरु सो कृष्ण सेज यू नो थिंक ऑफ मी मन मनाभव मत भक्तो ओके सो दिस श्लोका कम्स ट्वाइस द फर्स्ट पार्ट इज द सेम एंड द सेकंड पार्ट इज डिफरेंट सो कृष्ण कंटीन्यूअसली रिमाइंड्स अर्जुन दैट डू योर ड्यूटी and be aware why you are doing it you are doing it for two reasons primarily you are doing it uh, for as a service to me because i want you to do this and of course the secondary reason is this will lead to the annihilation of the kurus who are the criminals they are thugs they are rascals and they deserve to be eliminated from the face of the earth headed by duryodhana shakuni karna and all all these crooks so they have no right to live in this world and so you as a chatriya it is your duty to wipe this earth from them okay wipe them from the face of this earth and thereby free everybody okay but that's the secondary purpose primary is because i am telling you you should do this because i am telling you because i know what's best for you and for everybody else okay so therefore krishna says this man mana bhava mat bhakto two times he says this in the bhagavad gita okay and therefore that's exactly what arjuna does okay yeah. and krishna does not force arjuna okay krishna tells to uh, arjuna that think and deliberate and now you decide okay and what does arjuna say arjuna says yathechasi tatha kuru whatever you have said uh, i will do that okay arjuna doesn't say oh actually according to me i think you know maybe it could be like this maybe it could be like no he doesn't uh, use his own uh intelligence he surrenders to krishna's intelligence okay so that's very important when mercury enters pisces we should learn this lesson of you know how to surrender for the good not for the bad okay surrendering is not always bad when you are surrendering to god because god knows what is best for you for me and for everybody else okay now how do you surrender to god you know sometimes people think that oh it's my brain and you know my my mind is telling do this so i'm surrendering to my mind maybe it was god's voice no that's not like that when you are aware of your spiritual identity when you are in contact with your gurus and a spiritual community and you are doing your daily sadhana daily fixed number of mantras and spiritual practices Uh, you are doing your sadhana and you are doing your puja archana and all this and then by that when you are gradually elevating then you will uh, realize more and more okay what is god's desire and if you very easily want to know what is his desire then you can study the scriptures then you will come to know okay from a bona fide authorized guru in parampara not from any other place all right that will be all from my side god is there with you all the time just look to him and you'll find him if you're new to the channel then please subscribe to it below and some other videos on mercury i'll be putting them here okay and if you want a consultation from me my website is down in the description section